Hello class. Uh, so as promised, this is a short video uh, discussing what we're going to call close reading. Um, I'm going to discuss the full um, assignment of a close reading um, that you would do when I assign it to you. Um, oftentimes, it's not going to be the full two to three page paper attached to it. Sometimes I'm just going to ask for a, a, a paragraph or two. Uh, but using the close reading method. So uh, depending on the assignments instructions, um, you'll follow these instructions to a certain to a certain extent. Um, get my microphone better there. Um, okay, so close reading is something that's been around in literary study for a long time. Um, there are different methods for it. Um, the method I'll, I'll be teaching um, is sometimes called explication, textual explication. The French actually, I believe they started it, it's called, and they called it explication de texte. So if you speak French, you can uh, critique my French a little bit. Um, so the first step then in this process is uh, to find uh, a short section of a text that you're reading that sticks out to you for some reason. Maybe you're not quite sure why it sticks out to you, okay? Uh, but it's, it's a, it's a, no more than you know definitely no more than a page usually less than that maybe um maybe a paragraph maybe even shorter than a paragraph of text um if we were doing this with poetry you'd basically do the you would basically have the entire poem but uh this is with uh fiction so um you would find this short passage from a from a longer text that you're uh, looking at um and you would first Type it all out. So um, I will show you what I mean by that. This is the handout that goes along with this exercise. You'll find it uh, in our module. Um, the title of the um, the title of the text is uh, like the the file name is Transatlantic, uh, Transatlantic Close Reading Example, I believe, something like that. So um, this is from a short novel called Transatlantic by a Polish author named Vito Gombrowicz. So what you'll see here is that I've taken this text, this little piece, and I have rewritten it. I've written it out uh, into a Word document. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background, which might help a little bit with this, um, just a moment. Um, this novel is kind of, is almost autobiographical. Uh, Gombrowicz was a rather popular author in the uh, interwar periods between World War II and World War I, and then after actually, and uh, he died in 60 something. But um, just before World War II broke out, he had joined um, a group going to Buenos Aires, like a diplomatic group. Um, and they went to Buenos Aires and the day they got off the boat, Germany invaded Poland beginning World War II. And a lot of people who had come over decided to go back um, or try to go back to fight uh, for, the, um, for the cause. Um, and this novel um, is really quite um, unique in its, in its um, uh, topic and in its uh, content and in its style. Um, it's a very experimental novel. There's a lot of what's sometimes called dream reality uh, involved in it, sometimes magical realism. That's kind of a loaded term, so we don't like to use that very often. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a, it's quite a strange novel, but what has happened here is, um, the author and also, uh, narrator of the story, well, the narrator, who's the same name as the author, Gombrowicz, he decides not to go back. Uh, he is, he, he, one of his, one of the topics of his, uh, a lot of his writing is, um, um, like an anti-patriotism, um, a, a, a refusal to simply believe in traditional values for the sake of believing in traditional values, which has quite often put him at, at odds uh, with uh, more conservative um, uh, elements in Polish society. So he decides to go, not to go back, um, and he spends his time in Buenos Aires in the novel. He's trying to find um, work, He's t uh, told to go to um, the delegate, the Polish delegation, to find work with them, um, and so it's it's 
it kind of goes all over the place. Um, so what happens here is he's walking along and he's suddenly hit on the head from behind. When he wakes up, he finds himself in this closet. No more than a closet, maybe a small room, but very, very small little space. And there are three or four other people in there with him. Uh, and these are all uh, other Polish um, expats who live in Buenos Aires. Um, and the second he wakes up, um, they stab a spur, you know, like um, what a cowboy wears. Only this would be a very old fashioned kind of, you know, cowboy spurs usually go around and around and around so they don't stick in the horse. Um, this is a much older style. This is just basically like a, like a, uh, a sharp hook, really, um, that they have uh, attached to everyone's boots. One, there's everyone in the room has one on their boot. And the second he wakes up, they stab him with it. And in order, it's very painful. And in order to get in his leg, and in order to get it out, they have to like you know move in certain ways and you know finagle it so that the the hook will come out without tearing out flesh. So after they do that whole process, um, one of them, the the kind of leader of this small group right now, uh, he gives them this um, this little speech. Um, so another topic of the of the novel is all about you know what does it mean to be Polish. Um, what does it mean now that Germany has invaded Poland? What does that mean for the Polish nation? Uh, um, what is what is Polish bravery now? What is you know what is Polish manhood? All that kind of stuff. Uh, he, he, and he, throughout the novel, he's questioning all these things. So this is the little speech. So um, when you find the passage you like, you type it out like this. Leave lots of margin error, uh, margin, margin space error. Leave lots of margins all around. You might even triple space the line. So that you can put tons of notes everywhere. So what I really think helps is if you first, you know, you, you've been reading the novel, you've come over this passage and it jumped out at you for some reason, um, and maybe you're not quite sure yet. So um, you type it out, and then a good first thing to do is read it out loud, which is, a, which is what I'm going to do now. So now to our order of the Chevaliers of the Spur you belong. Do not attempt an escape or any betrayal, as with a spur, they will prod you. And if you notice the faintest wish to betray, to escape, and any of your comrades, into him a spur you must shove. And if you neglect doing this into you, they will shove it. And if the one who is to give you a spur neglects doing this, another, another one is to give him a spur. Keep an eye on yourself then, and on others keep an eye. It could, uh, so then there's a little bit, This you usually don't want to do this, but... I, I kind of felt these two parts went together, so I skipped a bit, um, and then I went to a, a, a few lines down from it. It could not set in my mind that friends were imprisoning me, and the door was not even locked. Just arise and depart, howbeit out of fear that again a spur I might suffer. With no movement, with no word I was sitting, they too are sitting. So you have this little um, piece here. Um, what you would do next is print it out. So you have a physical copy, get out your pen or pencil, and you basically just take notes directly on the page. Take as many as you can, as you can. You fill up the page with notes. What, uh, you know, you, you, some things to, to notice is repetition of, of words, especially um, specific verbs that are used over and over again, um, ideas that come up, you know, any kind of repetition is good. Um, what images are created here? What uh, ideas are being played with here? Um, um, anything that seems out of the ordinary or basically interesting <laughs> um, that you catch in this little in this little passage, you you write notes, you circle, you underline, you put exclamation points, you write little notes to yourself in the margin. You know, like what does this mean? Well, I think this means this right now. That kind of thing, right? So that's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to um, um, now. You, you uh, ideally, I would like you to print this out and have this in front of you. Uh, if not, you can just, you know, take notes. Um, but uh, I'd like you to spend at least 10 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna pause the recording. Um, and I don't have to wait 10 minutes. You just take your 10 minutes and come back. Um, but for 10 minutes, I'd like you to sit down and just take note after note after note on this text. You know, what 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 is confusing? What questions do you have as well? Uh, what do you notice that you, that you note from a different work maybe you know, uh, or, some piece of cultural um, context to it that you might know about, right? 
so that's what, for 10 minutes, I want you to take lots of notes on this little piece of text, okay? So I'll pause. Okay, so that's been 10 minutes. Now we're going to go to the next page and I'll show you the notes I took. So uh, I'd like you to kind of compare the notes you have to the notes I have. So for example, if we just start at the beginning, um, I circled order, um, which, which connotes structure, right? Um, and then Chevaliers of the Spur. Maybe you don't know what a Chevalier is. One of the parts of the process of close reading is looking up a dictionary, looking things up in a dictionary. If you don't know a word, look it up. So a Chevalier is basically, it, it's like a Cavalier, like a Knight. Basically, so it could be Knights of the Spur could be another way of um, saying this. Um, so this, when I first read this, it, it made me think of um, you know secret societies like uh, the Knights Templar, right, um, or other kind of you know clandestine organizations like that. Um, I, I, I highlighted you belong, right? He belongs and must be kept in line even more. So the fact that you belong to an order means that you have to be kept in line. Um, a spur, they will prod you. So um, what definitely sticks out is the idea of a spur, right? The, the spur keeps popping up all over. I mean, I don't, you know, it, it pops up several times in this very short passage. And what is a spur? Um, you know, you, you, might, uh, you might know that there's a, there's a phrase called to spur someone on, and that means to encourage them, right? To spur someone to action means to encourage them to do something. However, here, that's flipped on its, on, it, on its head. Instead of encouraging someone, it's actually discouraging them, right? Um, if, you, if you do something in this group, you will be spurred, right? You will be given a spur. Um, the idea of betraying and escaping, right? This is, these are antithetical, anathema to um, orders and societies. Um, and the fact is that it's his own comrades doing it to him, right? That his own seemingly friends are supposed to keep, me, keep each other in line. Um, and this whole circle of, of, um, of punishment then gets me, got me thinking about group regulation, right? How does a group regulate itself? How does it keep its eyes on, on themselves? Um, so yeah, right here, keep an eye on yourself then and on others, keep an eye. So you have to modulate your behavior and you have to make sure others behavior doesn't um, transgress the, the rules and the order, right? Uh, so at the very end here, we have friends imprisoning him. Uh, and this is highlighted by the fact that the door wasn't even locked. He could just get up and leave, but the threat of punishment itself, the, the door doesn't need a lock. When you're threatened with punishment, you could just sit there. You, you just sit there, right? You're not, you're, you're, too scared to leave because of the threat of punishment. Um, okay, so you have all that. You have your notes. And now the next step to this uh, would be to write about it. So uh, often, uh, this may not be in the class that you're taking. This is kind of a general uh, video I'm, I'm making about this process. Um, some of you will not have to do this, depending on what class you're in. If it's in a writing intensive class, you would have to do this. But otherwise, this is this this. We, in other classes, this would be kept to a paragraph or two. Um, however, let's say you have to write a paper about this. You have to take your notes then that you have here, and you, this would be the center, the the kind of uh, basis of a short two to three page paper you would write. Uh, a short two to three page uh, thesis driven essay centered around just this little piece of text. Um, I know that sounds like maybe impossible. You have less than a page of text here to talk about, but believe me, you can do it. Um, some really interesting things can come from just the paragraph uh, and putting into two to three pages. Um, and so if you're in a, um, if you're in, in a writing intensive course, we'll discuss more later about um, about uh, what thesis driven means, uh, the 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 um, um, structure of an essay, that kind of thing. Um, but at its core, this could be part of a larger work. 
So the few pages you get out of this could be actually part of a like a you know a a, a larger uh, essay, like a twenty page essay. Some of it could be about this one little section. So you would then take it, and the third step would be to analyze the text. You've taken all your notes on it. Now you have to analyze it. So this is just a little bit of what I wrote. Um, I actually did this whole process as one of the chapters in a book. It was originally my dissertation, but I turned it into my monograph. Uh, if you would like to buy it, I would be thrilled and I will autograph it for you. It's very expensive, so don't feel like you have to. Um, but this makes up one of the chapters of my book, actually. And the book, the, the chapter is 30 pages long. Um, starts there. That's the beginning of the chapter. And I get now, obviously, 30 pages wasn't just about this little piece, this little piece here. But uh, it is it, it's a corner. It's one of the cornerstones of, of the of the chapter. It's an, it's an important piece to the chapter. Um, so this is what you would do then um, at its basis. This, this process should end with at least two paragraphs or maybe one really good paragraph, um, depending on what assignment I give you. Um, at its most, the assignment I give you would be, as I said earlier, a two to three page paper. But we, if, if you're in a writing intensive of course, we'll talk more about the structure and the um, the requirements for that later. But this would be um, a good start. What you have here, this is I've whittled, I've cut this down quite a bit. There's a lot in there that I can't expect undergraduates to to be interested in. So this is um, this is uh, what cut comes out of those notes. Then, and I'm just going to read it aloud. Um, this passage illustrates the kind of power relations that Foucault describes in his work, Discipline and Punishment, uh, Discipline and Punish. So Michel Foucault was a French philosopher and uh, he talked a lot about punishment, the history of punishment. Instead of power as a top-down system, his analysis portrays power as a circular self-monitoring system in which everyone plays a part. The scene as a satire aimed at all regimes of control. It is, first of all, a lampoon of the kind of paranoid police states that Hitler and Stalin had installed, where everyone is a spy spying on everyone else. It also speaks to nationalist heteronormative regimes that use homophobia in creating and maintaining homosexual panic in its subjects as a means to sustain national structures. The very name of the group, the Chevaliers of the Spur, references romanticist clandestine secret societies who saw it as their mission to maintain the nation. The irony of this regime of control is the number of times the national, specifically male body, must be penetrated by the punishing spur in order to control it. This reflects the actual permeability of the body. Though it is supposed to be a system of control over the body, it ends up repeatedly penetrating that body, opening it up quite literally to pollution, not just the metaphorical pollution which Butler describes. So um, Judith Butler is another philosopher uh, that I'm referencing here. Her most famous book is called um, Gender Trouble. It's pure theory, basically. Despite the absurdities that are apparent in the system of control, it remains an effective system, illustrated by the fact that the, that quote, the door was not even locked just to rise and depart. Even though it seems quite easy to escape, the threat of violence and the very existence of the system itself make it nearly impossible to do so. Uh, so that then is the result of this process. You find a little piece of the text that, that seems very interesting to you. You type it out, leaving big margins. You make tons of notes about it. You read it not just once, you read it several times. You read it once, making notes, you read it again, make new notes, make, you know, as many times as you need to. Um, you then use those notes uh, to write a, a piece, depending on the assignment, um, analyzing that piece of text. Now, you'll notice I brought up two other people there in that passage. I brought up someone named Michel Foucault, which you may or may not be familiar with, and Judith Butler. Again, you may or may not have heard of her. And the, this is perfectly um, uh, uh, allowable. Um, if there is some cultural touchstone outside the text, that reminds you, right, that there's some kind of connection between the text and something you've read before. 
something you've listened to before, something, you know, some film you've watched before. There's some kind of connection going on. Feel free to use that in your analysis. Um, literary analysis is cultural analysis. And culture is a big thing. So feel free to bring in um, any kind of um, uh, any kind of uh, cultural products that you've read, listened to, watched before into your discussion of this piece of text. Okay. Um, so again, this is these are the basic instructions. Um, depending on what class you're in, I'll give you more detailed instructions on uh, the assignment that I would like you to do. But for now, I think that will do for this. So. Uh, thank you for watching this probably boring, but I hope a helpful video. Um, and until I talk to you next time.